Here we are running again. So now is the time for putting everything together. So you can see I've filled this little thing there and I've drilled the jack hole there for a, one of those electro socket things. So that will sit down there and go out like that. Right, so what I'm going to do now is we need to put this ear together. We need to remove, uh, do we need this? Have we got, no, we've got that's in place, that's in place. That's all we can do. So we can take all this off. So the aim of this tonight is to put this together and then we'll do up, do the fret leveling and stuff, <coughs> polish out, so that's done. Sort of complicated, uh, I don't know what the word would be, geometric setup, I always call it. So what I'm just gonna do is just scrape back these little crater, lip of the crater thing, because it creates a bit of a bit sticking up, stops the neck seating. So we'll bring up our bolts and whatnot. We've got our thing, <laughs> name of thing is screwdriver. Gonna find one that will do up the things well. Okay, so I've got to put everything together, including the bridge. Now, the problem with putting the bridge on, or when we put the bridge on, <coughs> can't really take that off. So I'm gonna have to be confident, happy that I'm sanded around there much as I want, because once it's on, we're gonna to have to do finishing over the top of it. Yeah, finishing over the top, because it's in place. And the same for the stop bar as well, or the stop bar posts. And that one of them has to have a, uh, we've got to put through the grounding wire as well. So. Now I can take the body and the neck apart, obviously. Which I will do. Right. So there's my joined up, joined up, joined up thing. So we will get tuners. Now we've got a set of replacement tuners. We need to put those on. We're going to need to put this on. We're going to need to put the bridge on. <clears throat> now, as I say, to do the bridge, this has got to go all the way in and stay in. So. to hope that this is good. It feels about right for knocking it in one go. And that's where we've got to be. Hopeful. So these are, this is for the, that thing, <laughs> the bridge. And then we've also got some here somewhere that are gonna have to be for, oh, I seem to have misplaced the ones. We need bushings to go in. I suppose it could be these. And go in for the uh, Bigsby. So the Bigsby bits here. Little container of the bits. So you've got um, British and American bits. So what, which is which? I don't know. I'll probably find out right now as we come to put this together. That one goes on there, that's pretty good. And presumably, if this is the US, American, British one, that will go on there. So there's a, it's going to be our, our place there and there. So, put those together. What I'm just going to do is just check the other pair make sure they don't fit. These should jam up. Yep, they jam up. So that's the Imperial set. <coughs> There's the good set. So what we do is we have that flat on there and then the first one goes in there, locks that down like so. And then your Bigsby comes on the top here like so with a little screw here and a couple of washers. Well, I'm not sure which washers go where. I'll have to double check to find out. But that's the idea. 
manual. Bigsby. Bigsby. Two screws, two screws. Don't see where. That's interesting. Don't see. Yep, yep, yep. Strings, yes, whatever. Come in and stop tailpiece, yes. Move both mounting screws, yes. Does it, English or metric, yes. Mounting plate. Line mounting holes with inserts, yes. Move the felt pads on the bottom of Bigsby B5. Really? Wow. Well, position the bar bar onto the mounting plate, aligning the screw holes. I suppose that takes over, doesn't it? Right, so those two little shorter mountains, mountain, shorter mountain screws. We've got short ones and long ones, they aren't that much different. Two short ones, two long ones. Shorter must be at the back of the vibrato. Rear mounting screws, short, longer. Base mounting screws, yes. Uh, what's this down here? Line with guitar inserts. Now what's this one? Are these washers? There's something showing there. Is that what it is? Does that really go through there? Are you serious? Maybe it is. It looks like a washer. It looks like the only washers. Right, let's put it there for now. We'll, we'll take care of it. Right, so <clears throat> important thing to do, get this bash into place. And for that, we need the hammer again and a suitable block. Here we have some mahogany. Front. That made my ears hurt. Now, that is that, and this is this. It is here, like so. Which, which is which? Actually, these are these are more chrome-like. These are more nickel-like. So we drilled these holes with a pillow drill, so we're hoping that they're going to be, yeah, no good. Uh, but we're going to need them on because that's going to be our bridge fixing <coughs> the setup. Okay, uh -huh. so we have, um, what are we doing? Um, base, longest, that's a bit funny, longest. <coughs> We'll adjust those at some point. Right, so before we do that, we now have to get, um, before we put these in, we have to check to what size. They're not a bad fit, so we need some wire that's gonna go in there to provide us with our grounding, bridge grounding. Now, the question is, what sort of wire do we want? Do we want this kind of wire? Let us see. So for this, we would want a fair bit of um, clear. There we go. And then this goes through the hole like so. And obviously that comes out there longer than we actually need. And then this goes in there. Now, the question is, is how do we push this in? Well, we can push it on top like that and whack it in and then we've got a tight fit we hope if it gets stuck we end up having to sort of figure it out from there that looks good we've got a bit of wire sticking out but we can snip that off better to have more than less Okay, both those <clears throat> fit well. So there's our bridge. Let's tuck this back on itself so it's a little bit out of the way for the time being, if I can. Bloody typical. It's only letting one piece of wire go through. Let's help it. It's fine. Obviously this is only temporary so we can get everything together. So, 
It then says, I'm going to keep this on there. But what it says is, it shows is, it shows is, it shows, huh, installs in minutes, no drilling. Well, on that one, it doesn't show any things. And this one, it does. Felt side down. Run to the back, up to the front. I kind of, see, there's no, that sits directly on there like that. Flat. I don't think there are any washers go in there at all, actually. So we get this on top of there. Don't we? Come on, don't mess me about. Thank you. That sits at the back. Oh. Pretty huge, great screws here. So once you've got this on, it really only does go in one basic place. And we don't, right now I'm not going to do with that too much. Sitting on it's with a bit of felt, pressing against the body or holding just off the body. Nice and stiff. And then we get this one. And the idea is that this then sits on there like so. We have, do you know what? That doesn't quite line up. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so we've got two shorts and two longs. What did it say about the shorties? Uh, shorties at the back. Okay. Shorties at the back. Let us hope. One. There. They don't actually line up. <sighs> that would be quite something, would it not? Sort of just about does, but this is this is pulling this one miles forward. <sighs> Talk about crap. Is that going in? Well, it is, but it's at an angle that is not really ideal at all. I'm just pulling it down. Like... Maybe it is meant to be that way. Put it under some sort of weird tension. I don't know, but oh, I should have taken the fuzzy stuff off. Oh. Probably why. Remember the rule? Take the fuzzy stuff off. Out, 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 out. One, two, three, four. Right, so it said take the fur off the back of these since we are, since we are sitting at, mating it up exactly. This fur is if it wasn't sitting on the vibromate, if it was going direct to the body, but this isn't. Okay, it still is not a perfect fit. I've got to say that is somewhat disappointing. What I'm nervous about is that how much damage it's going to do to these threads. I could see it biting a little bit earlier on, but we should get away with it. Sorry about the view, it's probably crap. So I'm getting all four of them in first. I won't put the Vibromate on for this part of the process because I'm really just going to be concerned with um, stringing up and it will work as is. Right, that's as good as it gets. I suppose we could put a thingy on. Oh no, what's this four screws for? Heck, what are they for? I know what the washer's for, don't I? Well, it goes like that, and this goes like this, doesn't it? Up the top, down the bottom. Or is it the other way around? I can never tell. Down the bottom, over the top. Okay. 
Who knows? Hey, there is your tent, your basic travel bag. Cool, eh? Now, let's get onto the next bit. I'll tell you what, we'll put the bridge on down there. Looking good. Mm -hmm. Let's look down at this end. Now, I haven't got the nut ready, so I'm going to have to use a dummy nut for this thing, which is kicking around. So, I'm not dummy exactly, but a spare that I can just use. That should be all right, actually. We'll go with that one, but let's get the tuners on. Now, I've got these down on my list as left-handed. Let's hope these are good for this. I think I checked them. And while we're at it, these will probably... Yeah, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What am I... Are these right-handed? I cannot think straight. Which way would I expect them to go? I would expect them to go the other way, wouldn't I? <sighs> now, let me just come back to where, where was I? Where I was, was I? Um, there's a box of graphy spare parts. Can I have here? Yes. Okay, well, I think I may may have to um may have to just double check yes i've got the wrong got it the wrong way around so i'm going to need to um going to need to find another set those aren't left hand why have i got that written on there another set of right handers Okay. Maybe I do have sets. This just isn't one. But I thought I got about four sets of right left-handers. So I'm losing my marbles. These have got those on. These have got those on. And you go. Six of those. Right. So these are not left-handed. So that's rule number one. They can go over there. And let's see what we've got. Left-hand. Six and nine left hand. This says six and nine left hand. Either that or I am completely doolally. No, that's right handed. Why have I got left handed written on there? What is the matter with me? These are right handed too. I'm a lunatic. That's it. like I've got a blind spot or something. So these claim to be left-handed. <laughs> They're going to end up over there. In the... No, nope, they're right-handed. What in there? I definitely lost my mind here. So now I am... I have definitely lost it. Wait a minute. So this is left-handed. No. Yes, it is left-handed. I was right the first time. <sighs> I've done everything back to front. That is left-handed. I thought as much. Wow. You get a quality set of tuners out of this deal. Dang. Look at that. <laughs> so the only set I've got that are left-handed are Goto. So I kind of swizzled myself there, but hey. Some, somehow or other, I managed to get this wrong all the way along. Can we see? Yeah, we can see. 
How weird to have got every one of those wrong. They're all right-handed. <laughs> now, question is, are these different heights or anything, or are they all exactly the same? Because I don't know. Take a look when we've got them upside down. Funny if these turned out to be three or three and three. Now that actually appears to have different, oh my God, they have got different lengths. Are you kidding me? Ugh. Well, that's cool and everything, but now I have to work out which is which, which is not easy. My God, I need the longest ones down the end here. Which isn't that one, it's not that one. Is it that one? That looks like that one. Holy cow. Yeah, they got some num, please, but please have some numbers. Five. Let's say five is this one. Let's imagine five is that one, eh? It's all got the same bloody numbers on them. Five. It's no use, is it? These are short, which we need. Where do we need the shorties? Never figure this out. We need the shorties. Actually, is that any different at all? I think I'm making it up. Uh, that's as far as that will go so the question I've got is is this even is this even a long enough tumors to go through this headstock I think I, mean, I think the answer is no so my get out of jail could have got me out of nowhere I'm going to just put them all together so I can see what's sticking out. So some of them are just long enough and some of them just aren't. So that's the end of that. And the ones that aren't long enough, I literally would not be able to get the string through them. So that's the end of that question. And they just are or they aren't long enough, which is a shame because at this rate, these are the only lefties I've got left. Uh, so to actually find myself with a set of tuners that actually don't work on a headstock like this is quite hilarious. So I've got I've got three of one size and three of another, but they won't work because they won't get through. Um, well, three and three. So what do we really need for this? We need the bigger angle down here. So those are a little bit higher, those are a bit lower. So this one would come down. Let's see if I can actually get these through. It might be the way this is set up, that it may be that these wound strings just go through and that, that's the way it's meant to be. Hardly anything sticking up. I'll just test it with a couple of blank strings. So I think that could be the secret to this and the only ones that actually have to stick up this far as you can see are the um are the what's it ones wound ones which is uh oh look, here's my here's my i suppose we better be just trying it out with this since we're here let's put on these strings ah, but we're at the opposite end aren't we It's an upside down. What sort of neck is this? Does it really <coughs> tune us along the bottom? <sighs> Which means these three have got to be the other way around then. Oh my lordy. If that's where the thick strings have got to go, they're going at the other end now. using a back to front reverse neck on the left-handed guitar. So it's a right-handed, I haven't even noticed it's a right-handed neck. 
Right, so these ones down here will be the plain strings. And if I can get a plain string through there, then, then it's a goer. And if I can get a wound string through to the end, it's a goer. But this now is, I don't even know which way up I tune this now. I am so lost. So lost without you. What way would you turn it? Anybody? That's undoing it. Oh, man. Oh, do you know what? I am stupid. Those are all, those are, I'm crazy. This guitar has got right-handed tuners on it, isn't it? Because it's, hey, so these are right-handed. Those were right-handed. So all the other ones are left-handed. If you put them on a left, that's what, that's what I'm, I'm not going mad at all. So the edge is back there. So that would be on there like that. I'm turning that round that way, makes it go that way. Turning it that way makes it go that way, same as that. So that is right-handed, that is right-handed, those are left-handed. Jeez. Yeah. Well, that has complete. So these are right-handed, so I don't have to use those. I could use six in a line right-handed. These set. Let me just try something here. Let me just try something because these are what I budgeted for. Those are, <laughs> I don't mean to be horrible, but I only paid for the, the, the other ones. So these are right-handed. There's me thinking I had to have a left-handed. Right, that's how it's gonna go. That's the ones. Right, let's start this again. Let's get rid of these. And we'll use the other ones again. So these are right-handed. I am working with right-handed. You, you wouldn't think that I could get so confused so easily. These are nice actually with the little button ones. So, so these have to be right-handed because that's what came with the kit this way round. So that's what the kit says it should be. Otherwise they point the wrong way because they're on a right-handed headstock. So these are going to be easier to use because they fit through better. There we are. <sighs> okay. But it was really odd to think why and work out why I was mislabeling all of those packets of tuners. I sort of lost my brains all in one go. And in fact, it's this upside down headstock that's caused the problem. And I suppose the fact that I've got the guitar turned right-handedly as well, but it's, it's going to be, without a doubt, we're going to have the Um, yeah, it's going to look upside down because of the way it's built. Right, let's just line these up. First of all, festival. Lining these up is a funny business because they don't all seat the same. So we have to kind of go for a, a visual look. And the spaces between them aren't perfect either. That sort of varies. Right, now 
we get this and we get another one and widen and we get this one two of these and then we get a fine thingy I know what I mean a fine drill no a fine screwdriver here Okay, so we go here. Yeah. Things just vanish, don't they? Then we pick up the imaginary one that I've just put down and hidden. There we are. Um, no, it's not going to be that one. Keep that. Do this one. Blimey. Easy. that then we change over to this slack off and we'll use these of course we'll take these off again later on when we come, come to do the finishing on the neck and the body. Doing the setup part of it. Okay, so I'm placing the, um, what am I doing? I'm placing the bridge. So what I'm going to do is let me do a little adjustment on here. So we know what the furthest ones away are going to be. Wow, that's a bit stiff. <laughs> Let's just do this in a straight line. Furthest away, a bit forward, a bit forward, a bit forward, back, a bit forward. Blimey. Stiff. Oh, that's terrible. That is terrible. Oh boy, that's terrible. That's coming right out. That's no good. Why is that so bad? So this is supplied by this is supplied by um, Andrew, and it's certainly not feeling good at all. Like it doesn't want to do the thing. So I'm now going to have to try and. Be very careful, choose a different head and persuade this to move, but it doesn't want really to move at all because it looks like it's not, it's not sitting, it's not uh, attached to its little washer properly. Uh, so bear with me, sorry about this. Uh, we have little screws that you're supposed to buy, um, fit into. And this one doesn't want to go. Okay, that 
it's supposed to be in. Oh, where am I turning? Back. Let's go first, forward, forward, forward. Just lock this in the middle, could you? Thank you. All right, furthest back, please, is that one. Furthest back, come on. Furthest back. Forward a little bit. Forward a little bit. This is the one that didn't want to work. Is it going? No, it's going the wrong way now. It doesn't want to do it. Now it's trying to come out. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. Okay, back, forward, back, back, back. Now this one's coming right out of its, right out of its, thing so that isn't working properly shitty crap so that is definitely not working ah. trying to keep this in locked in place but it's refusing to do it so it's only turning it the wrong way stop it coming out it's just going to come right out Ugh, Lordy. garbage that's a bad piece of design so I've pulled it out with the hope of resetting it and I think I think I've just about got it where I need it True, that is bad. So it's basically not working properly. And further back. So, okay, we're going to have longest, shortest. Now, we'll come back to worrying about that. So that's going to be the. That's going to be the. Right, getting me, getting me different wires sorted out. Sorry, I'm to think out loud. So here's the first one. Get this thing on, bent round the thing, it's going to go under the thing, over the thing, under the thing, over the thing. Probably not very much in the way of brake angle, that's the first concern. And you've got to wind it round, that's what the, the little, um, uh, the vibromate is for, for making this job easier. So maybe, instead of fighting it, maybe I should fit that straight off. Vibrant spoiler. How does it go? How do we do it? I suppose I'll brief the thing. Spring retainer. Something like that. Okay. Maybe we'll. Oh, just about fits through. Amazing. Uh, not a lot of spare room in these ear strings. Let's just lock that shut for a minute. Yeah. And then we got a, a nut that we might just put there. Um, no sign of the string winder. So this is the sort of first moment of putting a string on, string on. There we go. Yeah, not so bad. Actually, it's not a bad height. That's a first go. Vibromate sits there like so. Seems to be, whoops, got to go under there. Doesn't look bad. The, the, uh, the angle isn't too bad. The height seems okay with everything as is. So, Let's um, keep going. Right, where have I put anybody? Where have I put the spring winder? Come on, it's got to be in here. Thank you. Uh, 
obviously these are the strings that came with the kit, so they, I don't have any real hope for them. Um, we're not really intending to keep them. But that's not so bad. So the idea is just to get this strings on, get the neck loaded, and um, then do the fret leveling. So that whole part of it's done and out of the way. And then mainly we'll be focused on the, uh, the finishing side of things, which will take a few days and then I can take my time, run that into the weekend. So we build up a nice set of colors and oil and stuff. Okay, a few creaky things going on there. Don't know what that is. Uh, I mean, the nut isn't perfect, but it's only a it's only a temporary one anyway, so I'm not bothered. Um, which is the G out of these? Which is the stiff string, baby? Oh, wow. I think it's that one. <laughs> so this is. Obviously, to me, this is upside down, which is a, a kind of odd start point. So I can't play it, but I can make sure it works. I know how to do that. Because, the, you know, the basics are all the same, whether it's left-handed or right-handed. Just I don't get to explore how it feels as much. So I'm, I'm sort of just working on the the technical side, you know, as long as it's right, technically, then I, I know it's done. I don't have to worry. Okay, what about this? I think that's the B. Could be wrong there. Well, would you come along? So, the thing about kits is, come on, please work, thank you. The thing about kits is, obviously, you've, you've seen already that it's taken some experience to fix the problem that I've come up against. Oh, no, I've bent this one around there, oh, you dopey. How did I get that twisted around there? It's not twisted around there. Um, yeah, so I've, I've fixed a couple of obvious showstopper problems that would have been a real problem, you know, for uh, an, an inexperienced builder. And that would have been a real disappointment that, you know, the end of their enjoyment of doing this kit. So I think that's a, that's a real shame. Um, you know, gone to all that trouble of making sort of, uh, you know, the, uh, snap together electrics, no solder and stuff, and then then you have a an insurmountable problem with a bridge, um, and that means that either the person who bought this kit would have to take it to a tech, or they'd have to send it back and ask for the money back. Which, if it came all the way from somewhere like China, then it would be a problem because you know paying for the thing to go back and postage and whatever, it's not great. Anyway. So, um, technical problems, initial problems overcome. Uh, having repositioned the bridge, the, one of the things that I was thinking of, and I know a couple of other people were wondering about, is whether, whether or not the stop bar would also be out of line. And actually, it doesn't look too bad. Horrible little rubber thing on there, but never mind, it's a, a genuine Bixby. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a bit of slack in here. And I'm going to just move these off sideways while I mark up the frets, because right now I'm sort of jumping ahead to what I know is coming, and that's the fret polishing, or sorry, fret 
thingying. Yeah, I'll come to the word in a minute. Leveling. Because the other thing about kits, and any guitar actually, is that they're almost certain to have frets that need leveling. Now, some people go over frets and tap them, all the frets in with a hammer. Um, I tend not to do that. I tend to start with what I've got and then see what happens. Uh, you know, if, they're, if they show up as really uneven, well, they'll show up as uneven at the point that I'm leveling them. So I'll just take care of it there and then. But, so usually it's, um, it's just a matter of going ahead and assuming. In fact, I, you know, never, it causes any problem for me to assume that they need leveling. Unless I've played, test played the guitar beforehand and it, it's noticeably perfect as it is. In that case, it doesn't need leveling. Sometimes you find that with a very old guitar that's been so much played that it's flattened out everything over the years and it's it's kind of worn but it's you know beautifully worn um, but most of the time we're gonna we'll find that we need to do leveling so I'm preparing for it now by marking the frets up with marker pen now next thing I'm going to do is just make sure the strings are on their things and the spacing them out obviously we're gonna Make sure they're spaced out on this little vibromate thing, which is kind of cool. It, it's actually got a lot more backward movement than it has downward movement. Which we might get a bit more by the time this is um, uh, lifted up with pressure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put, tune it up to pitch, or close. So, is it well tuning? Now with a guitar like this that needs to be balanced, um, it's it's easier to tune it with a tuner, um, but for that you kind of really need it to be plugged in with its pickup, so we can plug it into the tuner and get an electronic signal. So as it is, we don't have that. So I'm sort of working blind, if you like, um, and we're going to keep going until we get it equilibrium. So there's our basic pitch and if we stand back through the ruins of the workbench you can see we've got we've also got uh, an action here that's fairly high um, which means I probably want to go down a bit but the problem of going down a bit is we lose the break angle so this is uh, a problem with just going ahead and fixing things, two things, um, that may or may not have been designed that way. So now I'm reducing the break angle even more. That note is distinctly dodgy. It's dodgy partly because of the nut at this end, which isn't made for it, it's not the right nut, but it's also partly dodgy because um, down here, this isn't high enough. So what we may have to do is shim the neck at some point to tilt that up further to force this bridge higher to give us back some uh, brake angle. 
I think, I think it's, but we'll see as we get to it. I can't be sure what the answer is just yet. So part of the problem may well be the nut. So if I, if I get, see if I get a bit closer with these things, this is a spare nut, so I'm not really worried about it. We start with the, the, uh, uh, start with the 26 here, and we're going to aim for a point three of a millimeter. So this is what I tend to do. Now the problem is we're also bottomed out here um, on the bridge without any further downward adjustment, and I don't think we're quite at my target action, which means. I'm afraid we're kind of obliged to shim the brig. I said shim the neck, sorry, because if we end up with no downward adjustment, then that's not a great place to be. Okay, so this is not bad here. I might, I might just leave this as is. Yeah, oh, a little bit high on the on the, that side, but it's not important for right now. We're, we're more concerned about uh, more concerned about the shimming and the overall action than we are with the nut. The only reason I bothered about the nut is I it wasn't playing very well. So, so that's not so good. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see just how far off the playability we are. So at the base side, I would be looking for 1.5, which is not too bad. We could probably come up a little tiny bit here. Um, maybe a little high. So the angle there on the bass string is not fantastic, but it's not terrible. Then we come across to the, the side, and that is too, too, um, the word two something that is too high so we do need a bit of shimming to go on now the problem with shimming is now um, we have to take the neck off we have to slacken off the strings take the neck off put a shim under but there's never going to be a better time to do it than now in other words there's no point in delaying it so while these strings are still relatively new I'm going to slack this off. I'm going to put a capo on to stop the strings moving around anywhere. Um, the chances are they could well just fall off when, uh, if and when I take the uh, neck off to make the shim. Now, the shimming thing. What do we? What can we do? Let's leave that where it is. Let's leave that where it is. When we take this off to shim it, I'm going to want to give it a standard shim, which is going to be about. 0.25 mil. I'm going to make it out of tin. No, this isn't tin. This is what's known as brass. That other thing. Um, and I'm going to cut a little strip off to make the shim. And then I'll tailor it a little tiny bit. <coughs> and to make sure it stays in place, I'm going to. Um, I'll do is I will put some double-sided tape on it, the kind I used for the um, templates. So what I'm going to do is cut this down. Is this even the right size? Well, yeah, it's sort of could be a bit wider in the pocket actually, but that's not so bad. Put this in here, cut it reasonably, same thickness all the way across. And then take the sharp edges off. And get rid of the sharp bits. Um, why? By sticking them into my skin. <laughs> Here's the way. Right, so this is gonna end up going in the back here. Um, before I do that, I'll put a little bit of double-sided tape, like so. Put that on there and cut around it. So just preparing this so that when I take the 
neck off and put the shim in. I can do it fairly effortlessly without everything falling apart. So we change out to the chunky screwdriver, go back to the four on the torque, get ready. Now the strings may all come off the vibra mate. So almost certainly will. Unless I can keep them under tension. Which I probably can't. So ideally, probably have to take all these out because they won't really sit very straight under there. So here we have it still under tension. We can now lift this out if we can try and keep the thing under tension. Well, no, they're coming apart. Oh well. Try. We'll have to hook them all up in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check this here. Now that is actually too not narrow enough. So I'm going to cut this down thickness wise. Back to that bottom. So there's actually not a lot of room at the back here because of the way that the, uh, how far back the holes are, but enough to get us a little shim in, shim in, shim on. Okay, so there's the sticky side, and we're gonna get that in and down. Get it centralized as much as we can. Uh, not quite like that, down to there. Push that back a bit. good. Try and line this up. It's going to want to go back in its natural place but the strings are now a bit on the akimbo side. So this comes out under there. This one comes over the top there. That's good. We'll probably get it onto there. Will this come forward far enough? No, I have to pull it back. Right, sort of mostly still on, so let's, let's push that into place and while I'm here, let's hook it up, back up. Opposites in first. So that's a 0.25 shim to lift up the neck a little bit. Let me take this off now and just reorganize the strings and everything. We should find that there's not enough clearance now over the frets. We should be too low. That's the idea. Um, let's just double check, check this time by hand. One, two, three, four. Okay, so there's our shim. If that isn't enough, we then have to do a little bit more. So back to our playing position. Everything playing. Line up, move around. So it's a case of now tightening this back up. A bit better. So now we will have too low an action at the far end, which is what I'm hoping. 
Looks like. They're just about right on the uh, IE. So there's a there's a difference in the, the, the lie of the body here. Got uh, one point one millimeters, one point one. So you can see there's it's actually uneven. The body top is uneven. So that's another little cute thing. I sometimes wonder the neck is, but I don't think it actually is in this case. It, um, no, it should be lower if anything, but that's, no, I think it's the body is flat, flattened down this way. Oh well, that's no, not the end of it. That's what the bridge goes up and down for. So that's the basic basic action set. Um, just having a quick look around. Um, the next thing I want to check is the relief on this neck. So it's pretty darn flat with these strings on. I don't know if there's any relief at all. A tiny bit there. I think that'll be enough to work with. So. I'm gonna call that okay. Got enough relief. We're just about high enough at this end to play. So we're ready basically to level the frets. Of course the question is, is are there any no noticeable problems with the frets? Doesn't like this, this angle maybe. bad. Apart from that. And then. Oh. Well, I say not bad, it's pretty bad. It's not the end of the world though, it's been worse, it had worse, done worse. So I'm going to, while we're here, while we're at it, I'm just going to do the levelling. Just going to do the levelling. And we'll just set it up, do the levelling, and kind of maybe pause it for the day and I'll get on to the next thing I've got to do tonight, which is to prepare a, a an adjustable nut. <laughs> adjustable tusk nut. So it's very flat. Hardly any, hardly any curvature at all. Mm. Tiny bit, but very little. So I'm going to start with the E track up here, and I'm going to work it out. Work it on out, work it on out. Look at her now, oh, it looks so fine, looks so fine. So the, the old banana leveling beam is very good in that 
it tells me what's going on. So cutting, cutting, cutting a bit low, low, cutting a little bit, cutting a little bit, high, 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 low, lower, very low, quite low, cutting, cutting, cutting. So you can straight away see there are different levels of frets or frets standing up in different heights and stuff. So this is what the leveling process is about. a bit too flat I'm gonna going to gonna see if this will oh, it'll bend positively in the other direction let's give it a little bit of a positive in the other direction tweak that's more room impressed thought they were okay but I'm beginning to beginning to possibly change my mind let's recalibrate since I've adjusted the neck curvature so we don't panic we just go with what's given so we start again I check the calibration put a bit more curvature into it this time Nice wind going on outside. Okay, so the aim, starting with the hardest track of all, the, in this case the low E track, and this is the one that's going to move, the string's going to move most in, in, in play. So this one is going to run out of space quickest of all strings hence it slaps the most so in this one I'm going to just work it quite a lot with very little downward force because I want the I want the um, curve of this beam to impose itself onto the uneven uh, ups and downs of the fingerboard and I can see that it's high there it's high there low there low there so it's kind of the ups and downs that you sort of ex expect um, and there's a very high fret down at the end there too which probably hasn't been helping anything in the mix much better much better sharp, sharp frets so i'm going to need to work the ends and frets as well on this so again another little detail of um you know what you're up against with a kit what time is it what is wrong with this phone 20 wow 20.55 that's is that nine o'clock why it almost is Good heavens. Right, I'll do this leveling and then I will run for the hills. A little bit extra here to try and bottom out this low spot. Okay, well I can see a huge high fret up here and a hugely high one there. And one that's so low here it's not even cutting at all. So that's that really is the the sort of measure of the difference between them, the, uh, the individual frets, and also then the, the sort of clusters of high and low ones.
a little bit on the far end here. Um, I don't know what gauge these, these strings are. They feel a little bit on the sloppy side to me. But that's what came with the, with the kit. So I was working with it for a minute. Yeah, definitely massively low fret right there. Sorry, high fret. Okay, so I'm gonna use the same calibration for the A track and move on to that. Pull it to one side. Get on the level. So what we find is as we come across into the, the treble side of things, the levelling required is less. Um, however, we find that they often find that the G track, as I call it, with the, this track where the G string lives, is, um, is the one that takes a bit of work. Once I've done the leveling, then I will crown the frets and then in another session I'll sand and polish them out. Yeah, definitely clusters, different, different clusters of high and low frets and individual high and low frets. So now I've come to the A track, I'm going to Sorry, the D track I'm going to recalibrate to make sure I got the same the right curvature because it changes across the radius so that's not bad. Okay. Uh, that's not good. Uh, quite a bit of leveling having to be done on this, which is quite the norm really for Chinese frets on necks like this. But you know, the fact that you've got to do it doesn't mean that they don't turn out playing well. Yeah, live with that. Now we calibrate for the G. And this is the one where as I said before, um, this is where you tend to bend the high strings into across into the G track. So it's sort of important to get this G track really level. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll level the G track and then I'll try a test bend of a B and an E across into the G track and see if it chokes out. Hopefully it won't. Well, it's getting there. Um, one of the things that doing this a lot 
teaches you is that a low fret often dictates what you can and can't do with your neck. See, the problem is now we don't have enough We don't have enough downward force and we struggle to keep strings on there to bend them. That's the thing. It's not bad. I'm going to have, we're going to have to live with its constraints. Uh, that's the that's the challenge or that's the price you pay with the Bigsby. It doesn't push the strings it, down and if you have a low action and the Bigsby then it can struggle to um, leave you with enough brake angle and the only alternative again is to shim the neck again with or double the shim in the neck so it's 0.5 of a mil which seems a lot but it's not a lot because it would only just about free up we'd just about lift off the, the bottom setting here which you know, to have a, a bridge at its ultimate lowest setting isn't doesn't feel right to me. I mean, it's not a problem to play, but it just makes me I'm aware that it's at its on its haunches. You know, and I sort of prefer things to be comfortably middling rather than extremes like that. But anyway, um, but, so if we do shim it again, then we would get back a little bit of extra leeway. Um, Looking down here, there's a low fret here that's really low. Or two or three, in fact, hardly touched at all. But again, not worry about it only insofar as it plays or doesn't. So we'll try it out. This is the B. Low spot right there, see? That's what makes it squelch as I call it. So the problem is that the low frets or low troughs of series of frets, it's them what dictates what's possible on your neck. So you have to, if you want to fix it, you have to bottom out the low frets and get everything else around it down to the same level as the low frets, which really it's the only thing you can do and it's a little bit costly in terms of fret metal but you, you haven't got any choice because they set the um, they, set, they basically dictate what's possible and what isn't but I think this isn't bad overall now um, but the question is is the brake angle isn't fantastic and short of a retainer bar of some sort which I know there are a couple of suppliers that make them but they're, they're expensive they're sort of meant for you know your Gibson's you know, sort of 335 Gibson type prestige guitars but they're a bit a bit pricey for something like this I would say um, and it's, a, it's like a lot of these things that people buy for guitars like Gibson's it's a concession to admit that this system isn't brilliant, <laughs> doesn't work properly. I think this will be a good spot to camp for the night. I mean, give up for the night and move on. Um, I think so. Probably enough, but I'm looking at the time now. It's 21.05. I'm going to get late if I do this adjustable nut as well. This thing taking longer. too far 
and the whole thing will come flying out. Hmm. Okay, well, I think I will probably need to wrap it up there for today. Um, we know everything's gone together, that's the first thing. We can hang it up just so. I've got to do um, one work on this nut because we've got to get that off in the post tomorrow. So I'm going to collect up the various bits and I will see you a bit later. Well, I'll see you again for the next instalment of the crazy firebird kit.